Hi, today I'm going to show you how to build a basic website in under 15 minutes. The type of site we're going to build will be based on a very popular software program called WordPress that is currently running millions of websites around the world. People use WordPress to run their sites because, one, it's easy to use, you don't need any programming knowledge, two, it's free for anyone to use, and three, it's super easy to set up, as you're about to see. One of the best things about WordPress is that it can be used to create any type of website you want. So whether you're looking to start a blog, build a website for a company or small business, or even a personal hobby site, WordPress can do it and do it well. You can also make it look any way you like. There are literally thousands of pre-built themes that you can use to change the look and feel of your site with just a few clicks. Now, let me just explain something to you real quick. This video is going to show you how to get a basic site up and running in under 15 minutes. It can be done, as I'm about to show you. But keep in mind, I've done this dozens of times before. If this is your first time building a website, then I recommend that after you watch this video and see how easy it all is, that you visit our website, where we have more in-depth, step-by-step tutorials for you to follow. And don't worry, they're all still free to watch and use. It might take you longer than 15 minutes to get your site up and running. But with our step-by-step -step tutorials, I'm sure you'll be able to get it done pretty quickly. Does that make sense? All right, let's get on with the video. Step one is registering your domain name. The first thing we need to do in order to build a website is to register a domain name. I personally use GoDaddy for my domain purchases. They're one of the biggest domain registrars in the world, and they offer great prices and have solid customer support if you ever need it. Oh, and one other thing. When you visit the tutorials on our website, you'll save up to 25% on your domain and web hosting by following the discounts link on our site. So don't forget to check that out before you buy anything. So visit GoDaddy and you'll see a page that looks something like this. Now don't worry if it looks a little different for you. They often change the graphics on this page around, but the main function is always the same. You're going to see a box where you can search for your desired domain name. So you enter your domain in the box and choose if you want it to be a .com or .net or whatever. Then press go. Next, it'll tell you if your chosen domain name is available or not. Now, if the domain name you wanted is already registered by someone else, GoDaddy will suggest some alternative domain names, or you can just think of something else yourself. Once you've found something you're happy with, click the Add button to put it into your shopping cart. Then click on Continue Registration. Next, you will see a series of screens that will ask you if you want to add any optional extras. Then you can choose how many years you want to register your domain for, and then continue through the checkout process. The next page asks you to register a GoDaddy account, so just check all your details are correct. Then enter a username, password, and a four-digit PIN number, and make sure you write these down and keep them somewhere safe. Now, once you're finished, click on the Continue to Checkout button again, and it'll take you to the payment page. Now you can choose to pay via credit card, gift card if you have one, check, or PayPal. So choose which payment method you prefer to use, and follow the on-screen instructions until you've purchased your domain. Congratulations! You're now the owner of your very own domain. You'll receive confirmation in your email, usually within a few minutes of your purchase. Now, here's step two, setting up your web host account. Now that you have your domain, the next step is to set up your web host account. Every website needs to be connected to the internet 24 hours a day, seven days a week, so that people from all around the world can see it. And in order to do that, you need a web host. I personally use and recommend HostGator as the best company to host your site with. They're one of the biggest web hosts around, and they've received many awards for their top-notch services and have great support staff available around the clock. So once you get to HostGator, you're going to see a page just like this. Click on the View Web Hosting Plans button. Now, if you're just starting out and you're only planning to build a single website, then all you need is the smallest plan, which is the Hatchling plan. If you plan to build more websites or plan to build a big website, then you may want to look at one of the larger plans or a reseller account if you're looking to build multiple sites. Most of us will just start out with a Hatchling plan. So click on the Order Now button under the Hatchling plan. Then you need to enter your domain name in the second box where it says Use an Existing Domain Name. So just type that in, then click on Continue to Step 2. Now Step 2 asks for your billing information. You can choose how long you would like to pay for up front. 
You can pay monthly or prepay six or 12 months or more in advance and take advantage of even more savings. It makes no difference which payment option you choose, so it's up to you. Select one, then enter a username and a security pin. And of course, remember, write them down and keep them somewhere safe. Then you just need to enter your billing information and click on the Create Account button. Follow the on-screen instructions to complete your purchase, and you'll get an email from HostGator with all your setup info in it. Step three is connecting your domain to your web host account. Next, you're going to need to connect your domain name and your hosting account. Now, don't be scared off by the technical jargon. It really is very easy to do. I'm going to show you how to do it step by step right now. First, log in to GoDaddy using the username and password that you made in step one. Now, once you're logged in, click on the My Account button on the top left of the site. Next, click on the green Launch button next to Domains. Now, you're going to see your domain name. Click on the domain name, and it'll open up the Domain Manager page. On the left side of this screen, you'll see a section called Name Servers. Then under there is a link that says Set Name Servers. You want to click on that link. You'll now see this Set Name Servers page open up. Now, first, you need to click on the option that says, I have specific name servers for my domains. Next, you'll need to open up the welcome email you've received from HostGator. Scan the HostGator email until you see the section that tells you what your web host account name servers are. There's going to be two name servers, NS1 and NS2, which stands for Name Server 1 and Name Server 2. Now you just need to copy and paste each name server from the HostGator email into the GoDaddy Set Name Server page. Make sure that there are no extra spaces at the beginning or end of the name servers, or they might not work. So copy and paste them both over, or carefully type them in. It should look like the one in this video, only your name server numbers will be slightly different from mine. Once you've entered in both name servers, click the OK button. That's it. Your domain is now connected to your web host account. Now, let me just explain something about this process. The domain can sometimes take a few hours to move over to the new name servers. It can sometimes happen instantly, and it can sometimes take up to 24 hours. So you might have to wait a few hours before you can go on with the next step. But just check your domain, and if you see a page like this, then you're good to go. Step four, how to install WordPress on your website. Okay, so you now have your domain name and web host all set up and ready to go. Next, we're going to show you how to install WordPress. WordPress is a free platform that's been commonly used by bloggers and site owners for many years. It basically allows you to build websites without needing any coding or design skills. It's highly customizable, user-friendly, and really is the best way to build your website. HostGator makes it very easy to install WordPress, so I'm now going to take you through the installation process. First, you're going to need to log in to your website control panel. You can do this by opening up a browser window and typing your new domain into the address bar with a forward slash and the word cPanel after it. So it's going to look something like this, www.yourdomain.com slash cPanel. Now, obviously, you'll replace the word yourdomain.com with your domain name. You will then be asked to enter a username and password, which you can find in your HostGator welcome email. So enter those, and you'll be taken to your control panel, which will look something like this. Now, there are lots of things you can do from within your control panel. You can set up email accounts, check your site's visitor statistics, upload files, and a range of other things. But for this tutorial, we're just focused on setting up WordPress. So scroll down until you see the fantastic deluxe logo and click on that. Next, you want to click on the WordPress link in the left side menu. Then click New Installation. Now you just need to fill in a few details for your site. The first box labeled Install in Directory, you can just leave blank. Then you need to enter an admin username and password to manage your site. They can be anything you like, but remember, again, write them down and keep them somewhere safe. The next section labeled Base Configuration can again be left blank. Then click on the Install WordPress button. You'll then see a confirmation page, so just click the Finish Installation button, and that's it. You're done. You can now visit your domain, and you'll see the standard WordPress install on it. Congratulations! You now have a basic website up and running. See, it really wasn't that hard, was it? Next, I'll show you around WordPress, how to configure, customize it, and use it. Step 5. Configuring your website. 
Once you have the default WordPress installed on your domain, you've technically built your first website. You can use this default WordPress install as is, if you like, or you can customize it with themes and plugins that will allow you to build any type of website you want. Now, there are thousands of ways to customize your WordPress site, but for this tutorial, I'll just show you a few of the basic things that you need to know. You can find more tutorials about how to customize your website at our full website, www.openwebsitetutorials.com. To log into the admin section of your website, you'll need to add forward slash WP dash admin to the end of your domain name. You'll then see this login page where you enter the WordPress username and password that you created when you installed WordPress. Now, once you've logged in, you'll see your dashboard. This is where you can manage your website from. It's a good idea to familiarize yourself with this interface as you'll be using it a lot when managing your website. On the left hand side, you can see a lot of sub menus that all serve their purpose. But for now, let's only focus on the most important ones. General settings. If you click on the settings tab, then general, you'll be taken to a page where you can set up the basic things on your site, such as the name of your website called site title, a tagline and your contact email address. Once you're happy with these settings, click save changes. Next, let's have a look at the posts tab. This is where you can add new content to your site. You can use posts to add articles or blog posts to your site. You'll see that WordPress has already added a sample post. You can simply delete this post and then start a new one by clicking on new post. To change the appearance of your website, you can change your theme. Now there are thousands of free themes available for WordPress, as well as a heap of professionally built themes, which usually cost between 30 to $80 to buy. For more information about themes and how to use them, check out the WordPress themes section of our website. Everything in WordPress is fairly self-explanatory and has been designed to be easy to use. There are also tons of tutorial videos available online to show you how to do pretty much everything you could ever want to do with your site. I'd encourage you to have a play around and get very familiar with how everything works. So that's about it for this tutorial. I hope you've been able to follow through this video series and get your website up and running. We'll be adding more tutorial videos to our site to show you how to customize your site and do various other things. So keep an eye out for those. Thanks for watching.